Well, Eric John Phelps, 24-7 World Radio, my program, Biblical Truth and History and Prophecy. We'll be back. Listening to 24 7 World Radio. is the Eric John Phelps Show on 24-7 World Radio. And now, Eric John Phelps. On 24-7 World Radio. Uh, This broadcast will have several purposes, and uh, the purpose is, of course, to first preach the true gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, and to secondly expose the power of the Jesuit order, which is making mincemeat of this country. And so, before the Lord, it is my desire this moment to launch a full-scale exposing an info war attack. Alex, right, Alex Jones has it right with that particular phrase against the Great Secret Society, as exposed in that tremendous book written in England, entitled "A Glimpse of the Great Secret Society." And that secret society is the Society of Jesus, that is now in the full-blown process of attempting to finally destroy what was once historic white Anglo-Saxon Protestant Western civilization and to return the world to the Pope's dark ages when there was no Reformation, when there was no Western civilization, when there was no middle class, when there was no freedom of speech, when there was no private wealth, when the priests and the nobles ran everything and the people were dirt and scum to be fleeced and eaten at the will of the papacy and its white power structure, the nobles of Europe. So this is going to be the major thrust of this broadcast. And there is nobody else doing it, to my knowledge, of this extent, for the purpose of exposing the Jesuits and their design here. Now remember that the Jesuit order, its heart and base of operations, uh, speaking secularly outside of Rome, outside of their headquarters in Borgo Santo Spirito, number five there, outside of Vatican walls, their temporal headquarters is America. The Jesuits rule the world through their control of Washington and New York City, and indeed also London, but primarily through Washington and New York City because this is the empire that they created as of March 9th, 1933 with their most loyal apostate Protestant Episcopalian Freemason, the damnable Franklin Julius Caesar Roosevelt with his proclamation 2040. He put the, he instituted a, this was a, the real coup d'etat. 
And in this coup d'etat, he instituted a military government, an emergency war powers government, which according to a specific document that I have from the U.S. Senate, that this country, as of 1973, when this document was issued in the congressional record, they said that this country had been under uh, emergency powers for 40 years. So the Jesuits, in running their emergency war powers government out of Washington, through Georgetown University, and hence running their emergency war powers government on every state level, here in Harrisburg, California, Sacramento, every state capital is in the hands of the Jesuit order, and every state government is an emergency powers state government subordinate to the emergency powers national government in Washington. And if you don't believe me, just go to any courtroom in your state and you take a look at the flag that they're flying. And the flags that they fly is the U.S. flag, the Title IV flag trimmed with gold fringe, and then they flag their, fly their state flag trimmed in gold fringe. Gold fringe is the flag of the chief executive. Gold fringe is the flag of the commander-in-chief. It's an executive flag. So what we have is these courts now, even though they are constitutional courts that have sprung from the written constitution of the of Article 3, say, of the U.S. Constitution and the state constitutions, they are in substance martial proceedings on behalf of the chief executive. And this would not be possible had you not been given a bastardized, hybridized citizenship called U.S. citizenship – which is was your 14th Amendment private U.S. citizenship altered by contract with the filing of a birth certificate in a public office in your state, making you property of an artificial person, of an artificial person, as well as then being a, a hybrid welded to this artificial person as surety for it. You're not an accommodating party. You're surety for it. You're linked to it. And this is the bastard hybrid status that they've put upon us that enables the bastard hybrid de facto military government and courts to proceed against you in every civil and criminal proceeding. Why? Because we're under emergency war powers. So I intend to fully expose this emergency war powers government run by the Vatican because, you see, this is how they're going to impose temporal power of the Pope here. The courts are already set up. They're already in place. All that needs to happen is a concordat, a treaty between the president, the commander in chief, which is what he really is, and the Pope of Rome through his papal nuncio in Washington, which is his ambassador to the United States. Once that happens, you now will have a unity between the Vatican and the U.S. that will impose canon law here. Exactly as was done in Hitler's Germany when he had a concordat with the Pope, signed by Franz von Papen, who was an item Malta, Hitler's vice chancellor, and 1933. And that concordat, by the way, is still in effect for all you Germans. Remember, the Jesuits hate you Germans. They can't stand you because you brought the Reformation to the world. Especially they hate East Germany. That's why they put it under communism for 45 years and beat those Lutheran Protestants into the dust. So they want to end white Protestant and Baptist Western civilization by any means necessary. And it appears to me that we are now in the final death throes, the final design of the Jesuit order to bring this to pass. And so this will be one of the major purposes for this broadcast, to have you instructed in these matters to teach you from the books that I know, to get the the uh, evidence from individuals who fully are fully aware of this, so that you'll be fully uh, informed as to what's happening and will not be deceived either by the Pope's general media, controlled by the Council on Foreign Relations, controlled by uh, various other secret societies. Of course, high, high level Scottish Rite Freemasonry is one of them. The Knights of Columbus are another. The Knights of Malta are another. The Knights of the Equestrian Order are another. I mean, it's through these papal knighthoods and Masonic secret societies that the Jesuits fully control and thereby, thereby fully control this for Holy Roman, which I call for Holy Roman, 14th Amendment, corporate fascist, socialist, communist, 
anti-white, pro-black American empire. So we want to be understanding with that matter. Now, the purpose of this broadcast is I wish to teach you about the international intelligence community. You must realize that all the intelligence agencies work together. And they have worked together uh, since no later than 1933, when the Jesuits brought FDR, Julius Caesar FDR to power in America, that dictator, when they brought Hitler to power in 1933, when they brought Stalin to power in 1922, when they brought Benito Mussolini to power in 1922, when they brought Winston Churchill to power as he was first head of the Admiralty and then ultimately becomes Prime Minister in the late 30s after Neville Chamberlain is deliberately sent to deceive the British people into thinking there will be peace for our time. Um, so uh, Francisco Franco, uh, the, 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 uh, the dictator of Spain that conducted a three-year civil war in Spain that killed about two million Spaniards that had, which government had kicked out the Jesuits. And so Franco was raised by the Pope. Generalissimo Franco was raised by the Pope to wage war on Spain and pretend and prepared to kill as many Spaniards as necessary to restore the Pope's temporal power. So Franco and Hitler and Stalin and Churchill and FDR and Hirohito of Japan, all of them will be working together in what I call in my book the Second Thirty Years' War or I should say the second act of the Second Thirty Years' War. The Second Thirty Years' War began in 1914, late 1914, and ends in April of 1945. That's the Second Thirty Years' War, and after that Second Thirty Years' War, there is no Protestantism left in Germany. It's finished. It's done. They bombed the Church of Our Lady, the Luther there. Uh, they, they decimated the Lutheran Protestants by any means necessary, using both the communists and the fascists. And that's another point I wish to make, is that communism and fascism works together. Communism and fascism works together. They are extremes, but the maxim of extremes meets always is true. And in this case, communism and fascism is no exception. That's why we find 33rd degree Freemason Henry Ford financing Hitler but he also is going to open up his Ford plant to the Bolsheviks and to Joseph Stalin in the 1920s and he's ultimately going to send some 300 Americans over to Russia to work in the Gorky factory for the building of cars and automobiles that he'll betray all of them, and only one of them will ever escape back to tell the story, and that's a Jew named Victor Herman, who wrote the book Coming Out of the Ice, and the other book titled The Gray People. Which, if you have a weak stomach, The Gray People is not a book for you to read, because it tells of all the horrible bestiality and rape that went on in the gulag camps with those poor Russian women, imposed by the Jesuits and their KGB. And certain Jews working for the Jesuits and the KGB. Because remember, there's always a Jewish element that's working for the papacy, and that's another point. The Jew, there are the high level Jews involved in this are all papal court Jews. Henry Kissinger is a papal court Jew. Bernard Shalom Bernanke is a papal court Jew. Um, all the, and they go, the list goes on and on and on. If you could just get the copy of the annual report of the CFRs, hundreds of Jews in there. They're all busy working for the CFR, which is controlled by the Archbishop of New York City. That's why the Council on Foreign Relations was established in New York City in 1921 in the first place. It was the American branch of the Royal Institute for International Affairs out of London that had been established in 1919 after World War I. So we need to have an understanding of the Pope's international intelligence community. And I will be reading from some of the classic works, and in particular, 
Fletcher Prouties, the secret team.